Hey guys, it is Sam here with a new video from NCG Northern Card Gaming. Today we're going to start looking at a new series, uh, looking at the road to the EUIC 2019. This of course takes place in Germany, uh, in Berlin, at the end of April. Today's video we're going to look at a short tier breakdown, where we think the meta is right now, what we think, what decks we think fit into each tier, and uh, have a look at how that might affect your testing in the run-up to Berlin. So the first deck we're going to take a look at today is the Celebi and Venusaur Tag Team GX. Uh, we've put this into Tier 2. We believe it has seen a little bit more play over the last few weeks at Cups and Challenges and other events around the UK and the US particularly. So we think this card and this deck really deserves its spot here in Tier 2. It's growing in popularity, so you might see it a little bit over the next few weeks as you begin to test ready for the EUIC. The whole idea of this deck is we set up our big Celebi and Venusaur, 270 HP basic Pokemon. We tank it and then we heal all that damage away using our Shamans, using our Gardenias, using our other uh, support cards. And then we also have our own arsenal of uh, tools and items that we can use to help pressure our opponent, force them to waste their resources, things like hammers, uh, get rid of their energy, and we can force them onto the back foot constantly. Um, the whole benefit of this deck is we have this incredible Evergene, Evergreen GX attack. Um, if we have the extra grass energy on there, we shuffle all our own resources from our discard pile back into our deck and we can, we can be ready to go again. Meanwhile, our opponents are still struggling to recover from the first time we went through using all those items, using all those hammers. And we can really put a lot of pressure on and just play out a long game and force our opponent to find answers. Uh, solar beam attack on here also helps us deal really really well with the single prize attack decks that are out there things like zapdos um, we can just continually heal off their hits because they're not going to be realistically one-shotting us heal off their hits but we can just sweep away their board hitting for 150 each time nice and consistently the next deck on our tier 2 hit list then is this alone executor deck uh, it's seen bits of play constantly since it first released in Forbidden Light as a grass type alone executor. Um, but now we also have this interesting new dragon type that's come out with the release of Team Up. It's seen bits of play recently at UK Cups. Um, I know a few players also took it over to the Bolzano special event. The whole idea here is we have 160 HP non GX stage 1 Pokemon. It can be really awkward to deal with for some of the decks out there. Things like Zoroark can't hit 160 unless it's playing Devoured Field or Kikui. Um, and it really needs to kind of use other external methods, modifiers to reach the numbers. The kind of downside to all on Executor right now in the format is it can be rather slow to set up. A lot of decks out there are quite fast, things like Zapdos, um, and start taking prizes as early as turn one, turn two. Um, whereas this alone executor deck needs quite a bit we need to get our board state ready we need to get some executes out ready to evolve up and we also need to get energy in the discard pile which sometimes can be a problem the other issue with this is we have the tropical shake attack but it kind of has a bit of a damage ceiling so we need some modifiers things like Kikui or Lorantis or the Altarias that have the uh, fight song or sunny day abilities just to kind of boost our damage a little bit otherwise sometimes we can just struggle to reach the numbers that we need to reach consistently the final deck in our tier two um, is this reggie gigas hooper stall deck um, the whole idea here is we just throw out various walls that our opponent has to deal with mostly it's single prize walls things like the reggie gigas and the hooper that are on screen but we also have things like shuckle gx in the back that we can throw out as well force our opponent um, to kind of find answers to a lot of the questions we can pose um, and we can just force them into various corners that sometimes they just can't deal with uh, because we play so many walls we also have a lot of answers to a lot of the current meta decks things like hooper can help us stop the big attacks from things like uh, pikachu and zekrom Things like Reggie Gigas also help us with the matchups like uh, Zoroark because Zoroark can't consistently hit 180 HP, 180 HP of damage in one shot, usually even with Kikuis and things like that. And Devoured Fields in play, it still needs a little bit more to get over the line. Um, the deck does have a little bit of uh, downside though, obviously. 
That being, it is a stall deck. It is very, very slow. It can be a little bit boring to play at times, um, but as we've seen recently at the Bolzano special event and at the Khan special event, it has made it all the way to the final both times. Um, so it really does have a lot of the answers right now to the current meta. The next deck on our list is this Ultra and the Cosmo deck. Uh, we've put this into tier 1.5. Uh, again, I think this is a deck that's very strong in the meta right now, but maybe just outside of tier 1. Um, but maybe the right pilot can help us find this deck a spot in tier 1. But I think it does take the right pilot to guide this deck into a tier 1 kind of deck. Uh, Ultra and the Cosmo is another deck that we've seen played a lot since Forbidden Light released. Uh, it's very strong, it can hit huge numbers, and once it gets set up, it can be really, really hard to stop. It has a huge damage ceiling and can really punch holes in the big tag team GXs that we are seeing right now. It has its own built energy acceleration engine with the Malamars, so it also has answers to the stall decks that we've just discussed, uh, which means it's quite strong, has an all round good games, um, but then it also has its inconsistencies if we don't get it set up, if we don't get our Malamars into, onto the board, if we don't get energy into the bin that we can then start cycling, we can sometimes have a little bit of trouble just getting going and sometimes knowing when to scoop is a good skill with this deck. We also have a couple of versatile extra attackers in this deck. Uh, Giratina's on screen that came with the Lost Thunder set. Giratina's a nice card because its ability lets its lets us bring it back from the discard pile when we need it and we can also spread a couple of little bits of damage counters ready for a big sky scorching light end game attack we also have the marshadow gx from burning shadows that can copy our attacks of our ultra cosmo or our giratina for the psychic energies and we can use the fighting type uh marshadow to take down big targets like zoroark gx and pikachu and zekrom the second deck that we've put into tier 1.5 is this Blacephalon build. Um, this is probably the most straightforward deck in the format right now and personally it's one of my favourite decks just because we can be super aggressive early, we can get our burst GXs off and we can just put on loads and loads and loads of energy into the board and we can hit big numbers with our mind blown attack. We also have the Naganadel which helps us get energies onto board with the charging up ability. We can bring energies back from the discard pile and recycle those energies, which is brilliant and again can help us charge up our mind blown attack. The downsides of the deck, we are very ultra beast focused. We are looking to get our beast rings into play. Uh, decks that can force us out of beast ring turns, taking odd numbers of prizes, taking multiple prizes at once, can be a little bit of a problem. If we, if we don't get the energies on board with beast ring, we can struggle in the mid to late game. And we can struggle to close out games. Uh, the deck always also plays very little Pokemon recovery, sometimes trying to trade prizes against single prize decks, things like Alone, Executor and Zapdos. If they don't bench GX Pokemon, sometimes we can just struggle with the prize trade a little bit. And we, the most of the builds around at the moment aren't playing Rescue Stretcher, so we struggle to get the Naganadels back once they have been KO'd. So now we are into the world of tier one decks. These next three decks are what I believe to be the three strongest right now. There is one I think is stronger than the others, but I will come on to that when we get there. Um, the whole thing with Pikachu and Zekrom is we just hit huge, huge numbers. We're fast, we're aggressive, and we can have big price swing turns with our Tag Bolt GX attack. But we also have a number of sort of plan B options where we can go in with Zapdos, we can go in with Zero Aura, and we can really sort of cause decks a lot of problems, opponents a lot of problems with our multiple different answers. The other thing that Lightning has right now is the damage modifiers with Electro Power. We also have Choice Bands, so we can really rack up some big KOs and just rake in the other sort of tag team GXs and the other big Pokemon that are out there right now. The downsides to this deck, of course we are a tag team GX, we are very reliant on the tag team GX of Pikachu and Zekrom, uh, and if that gets knocked out, we lose three prize cards, it's as simple as that. So it's very very strong, but we are a 240 HP basic, and we are weak to fighting, which as you'll see in a minute is very very popular right now too. We're also a very combo heavy deck, 
um, we rely on the combos to get set up and sometimes if we just don't see the cards we can struggle to hit those combos and we can struggle to get our full blitz off turn one and turn two to really put the pressure on our opponents so as i was just saying the next deck on this list is the zoroark lycanroc build the fighting type in this deck is really strong right now, particularly because there's a lot of this Zoroark running around, which is fighting weak, and there's a lot of Pikachu and Zekrom running around that is also fighting weak. This Zoroark Lycanroc archetype is the archetype, in my opinion, that just does not die. It adapts to the new metas ever since it has seen play originally at the London uh, EUIC back in 2017 in November time. It was first came onto the scene there, and it has not really looked back since. It continues to grow and evolve more so than things like the uh, Galissapod Zoroark builds. Um, and just having these two cards together gives us a nice consistent base with the trade, with the inbuilt draw engine. And it also gives us the versatility and control of Lycanroc's Bloodthirsty Eyes. We can, we can draw cards, we can play supporters, and we can affect our opponent's board state at the same time with... Uh, various crazy cards like Guzma whilst still drawing cards ourselves and just really putting a lot of pressure and drawing into all our outs really quickly. Um, the other options we've got with this deck right now, uh, Lucario was seen um, played by uh, a number of players, uh, particularly Stefan Ivanov at the uh, at the last Internats um, in Australia and it really really hits hard against again against the fighting weak Pokemon. Um, Alolan Muk has seen a lot of play particularly to kind of shut off the Jirachis in the Zapdos Jirachi lists and also Lycanroc GX the new one from Team Up has seen a little bit of splashable play here and there just again to slow down the Pikachu and Zekrom decks that are running riot and are just incredibly fast and crazy right now. And finally we come on to this Zapdos Jirachi build that I've already mentioned throughout the video. I believe this deck is currently the best deck in format. It's very quick, it is very versatile. We take a lot of early prizes with the Zapdos, uh, using the Stellar Wish ability on Jirachi to dig out all our combos early, dig deep into our deck, um, and we just start taking prizes, and we can almost take the game away from our opponents sometimes if we just take away all their basics uh, before they can evolve into their stage 1s, their stage 2s, and we can just sweep the board a little bit before they even get a chance to set up. The uh, mid to late game sometimes can be a bit of a struggle. Um, so I really like this build at the moment that features Jolty on GX, it features Buzzwall, and it features Neil Ego. Um, it gives us more flexibility, it gives us more options, um, particularly once our once we've spent all our Guzmas, escape ropes, things like that. We can then start chasing things down with Jolty on GX, uh, Electro Bullet, and the Swift Run GX, which can buy us a turn. We also have the Buzzwall and Neil Ego, which if we play the Rainbow Energies, it's a simple case of getting to our opponent to the right number of prize cards, dropping Rainbow Energies, and we can start hitting big with Sledgehammer um, and with the Neil Ego's Nightcap attack. Um, the deck is also very flexible in terms of tech cards. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of decks are running things like Absol, uh, particularly to kind of trip the mirror up a little bit. Um, we also have things like Zeb Striker because we want to respect um, the Muk in a lot of decks right now. Things like uh, Zoroark that are playing Muk, we want to respect that. So we could play Zeb Striker to help give us a draw option when they've shut off our Jirachis. The uh, final slide we've come to is this kind of honourable mentions slide. Um, I don't really know where I would fit these decks into tiers right now, so these are decks that. I've seen a little bit of play here and there. Uh, you might see them along your journeys uh, through cups and things, and particularly in your testing, running up to Germany. Uh, but I think they all deserve a bit of a mention somewhere along the line. Um, Zapdos Lycanroc, particularly strong. Um, it seems quite popular over the last weekend at cups and things um, over in the UK and in the US. It came second at Fortaleza Regionals, and this was kind of the first real showing of the deck. Um, so it might be one to watch out for, particularly as we go into Denver and into the EUIC. Uh, the next one is Persimian Coco. Again, fighting, just being able to hit fighting weakness right now is so strong. So the fighting type Persimian that can build up its damage with the team play attack 
is just really really good in the format right now single price attackers again lots of non-gx focus um, so we we trade well with other single prize attack decks as well and coco helps that a lot a lot of decks can't struggle can't deal with spread at the moment uh, they don't play the healing options quite how decks used to so we can we can really sort of push on with flying flips there and then sweep up with the Persimians later on uh, Zygarde Buzzrock is another deck that could see a bit more play uh, particularly this past weekend it won the Jakarta special event uh, alongside uh, Lycanroc in the deck as well Lycanroc with the Bloodthirsty Eyes ability so that might be a deck that we see a little bit more on the circuit now again fighting type really strong uh, and takes out some of the big threats in the format the final deck on this list is the Charizard deck it is a huge fan favourites deck it saw a day two in Cannes I think it finished about 28th in the end but I'd have a lot of question marks as to whether this deck is good enough Florian adds a little bit of a second uh, second string to the bow for this deck we have some powerful attacks on the Flareon GX but again my real concern as to whether the deck is just generally strong enough so that's it guys thank you very much for listening uh, if you think we've missed something if you think there's uh, a deck that should be in a different tier maybe or a deck that we've just missed altogether that could have been one of our honorable mentions please remember to like and leave a comment or share your opinions with us We've been Northern Card Gaming. We will be back with this series, this Road to UIC series, in the next few weeks. We've got some um, uh, meta forecasts and things like that to bring you. Uh, so keep an eye on us, and we'll see you soon. Bye.